Hello everyone. My name is Naveen Nishal. I am from Department of Physics, Indian Institute of Technology, Patna. Today I am going to discuss about my undergraduate physics teaching. In this presentation, I shall discuss about myself first, then about the classroom session, and about my research work and the achievements. So I joined IIT Patna in the year 2008 as an assistant professor. Then I became associate in 2015 and this February I have become professor now. I have been academic visitor to Capital Normal University of China. I have been a researcher, visiting researcher to Oulu Southern Institute, University of Oulu, Finland. Prior to joining academics, I was a scientist at Instrument Research and Development and Establishment Dehradun and one of the DRDO laboratories. And prior to that, I have served as junior research fellow for one year at the School of Environmental Sciences, JNU. I teach during my assignments. The assignments which I have taken, the taken is physics, preparatory physics one and two, then physics one and physics two at the general theory courses for the BTEC first year physics students and uh, P physics laboratory PH110. Then I teach one two elective courses, one for the BTEC second year students as optics and lasers and for BTEC third year students, uh, another elective is engineering optics. Then I teach one uh, optic elective course for the MSc students, it is Fourier Optics and Holography. So I coming back to my technic, uh, technical session for the discussion of the classroom session. In this seminar, I wish to discuss about the term diffraction of light. The effect of diffraction of light, it was the first the diffraction term was coined by Maria Grimaldi. The Latin word diffringer, the meaning of the term diffringer is to break into pieces. When we refer this in terms of light, means breaking up into different directions. So this diffraction refers to various phenomena which occur when a weight encounters an obstacle. It means it is the apparent bending of the waves into a small obstacles. This diffraction occurs with all waves. Sound waves, water waves, electromagnetic waves, such as visible light, X-rays, radio waves, and that is why we have uh, XRD patterns when we deal with the condensed matter physics. So this diffraction effects are pronounced, most pronounced for waves, where the wavelength of the light is of the order of the size of the diffracting object. So look at this uh, peculiar uh, picture what we when we hold a CD compact disc in our hand, we see this kind of structure. This happens due to the diffraction of light because the, it has the normal tracks on the CD which serves as a diffraction grating and when normal white light falls into it, it gives you the diffraction and because of the white light, it contains all the colors. So we see this beautiful colors. So bending of light across the edges of an obstacle is called diffraction. Now, if we create a hole, pinhole of the dimension B, which is not a point source, and allow the light beam to pass through, what we see that it will illuminate the region AB on the screen. If we make this width of the B is smaller, then what we see the illumination region on the screen becomes larger. You further increase, decrease this gap, you further you see the further uh, illumination region is enhanced. At a one at one point of time, it so happens that when you make this width be very close to the wavelength of the light, then what we see beautiful patterns, diffraction patterns on the screen that is caused due to the diffraction. So this is what we say that when the slit width or the width of the obstacle is comparable to the wavelength of the light source, then 
the diffraction pattern is pro most pronounced. So when we always discuss that, what is the difference between interference and diffraction? So interference corresponds to situation when we consider superposition of waves coming out from a number of point sources and diffraction corresponds to situation when we can see the waves coming out from an area source like a circular or rectangular aperture or even a large number of rectangular apertures like diffraction grating. This diffraction phenomena are divided into two categories. One we call as the Fresnel diffraction. Another one is called as the front upper diffraction. In case of Fresnel diffraction, the like the distance between the source and the screen is finite. And in case of Fraunhofer diffraction, the distance between source and screen is infinity. This term infinity here is refers to the distance with as uh, in, with respect to the slit width. So suppose I am looking at the distance one meter or two meter distance and the slit width is say one millimeter or half a millimeter. So with respect to half a millimeter, the distance where we are going to look at the diffraction pattern, it becomes like infinity. This is why we call that. So from Hoffer diffraction, this is what we say, you have the source of light. So what we do, because to bring this infinity to a defined focal plane, we place a lens in front of that. So we, what we see that the diffraction pattern is formed on the focal point of this lens. This is what is the Fraunhofer diffraction. So source of light and the screen are at infinite distance from obstacle. So the credit goes to uh, Joseph von Fraunhofer for this Fraunhofer diffraction. When we talk of Fresnel diffraction, it means the distance between source and the screen are at finite distance. So this the finite distance is very close. It depends upon the aperture dimension. So it can be 1 millimeter to 10 millimeter, 20 millimeter, and so and so forth. This is what is the Fresnel diffraction. So if we look at the diffraction pattern due to this Fraunhofer diffraction and Fresnel diffraction, this is what the difference we observe. In case of Fraunhofer diffraction, you see this zero intensity minima. It means in minima, there is the pattern where we see the bright and dark pattern. Dark is completely dark, but which is not the case with the Fresnel diffraction. It has non-zero intensity minima. Means the minima will have the minimum intensity, but it will not be zero. So maxima or minima are not well defined in case of Fresnel diffraction. Whether in case of Fraunhofer diffraction, the maxima and minima are very well defined. So we'll take one example like single slit diffraction pattern. So what we have, we have a single slit here and we place a lens here and look at the diffraction pattern. So for mathematical convenience, what we, so, what we do that this whole slit is divided into small number of infinite point sources. Then we consider one of the point sources like A1, A2, A3 and we draw a perpendicular here and calculate the path difference between the uh, light coming from the one point source to the respective point sources and then we calculate them we add them together all the uh, contributions and what we find that this path difference which comes out to be a2 a2 prime it is delta sine theta delta is the distance between the two point sources so as we know that there is a relationship between the phase difference and path difference, phase difference is equal to 2 pi by lambda into delta sine theta. That's the path difference. So we can very well calculate that and, and uh, see how the diffraction pattern is going to look like. So we have to calculate the contribution from the each point sources. Let us calculate the, all the phase differences and combine them together, do some mathematical uh, uh, manipulation and finally what we get is the intensity pattern is the i equal to i naught sine square beta by beta square where i naught represents the intensity when theta is equal to zero here we have introduced a term called beta which is defined as beta is equal to 
pi b sin theta by lambda. What is b is the slit width, the single slit what we have assumed here, and lambda is the wavelength of the light. So when we will get the maxima and minima. So for maxima and minima, we will consider i equal to zero for the minima. So when i equal to zero, beta has to be m pi. So when beta is equal to zero, we can calculate the sine beta by beta is one. It means i corresponds to i naught. So b sine theta is equal to m lambda. This is the equation for the minima. Now we can take different values of m and that will correspond to first minima, second minima, and so on and so forth in both the sides. So here plus one or minus one. So minus one doesn't mean it has the magnitude is amplitude is minus, but it shows the direction uh, it is on the other side. So similarly, we can calculate the uh, maxima as well. So for calculating the maxima, we will equate, differentiate this term. So I equal to I naught sine square beta by beta square differentiated with respect to beta and equate it to zero. So we get this kind of equation sine beta into beta minus tan beta is equal to zero. So we have two equations. One is the sine beta is equal to zero. So sine beta is equal to zero is it means beta is equal to m pi. This condition corresponds to the minima. This we have just dealt. So another condition is beta is tan beta is equal to beta. That's the maxima. So what we will do, the roots of the beta equal to zero will correspond to the central maxima and other roots can be found by determining the points of intersection of the curve y equal to beta and y equal to tan beta. This is what is drawn here. So we have two equations. One is this y equal to tan beta and y equal to beta. And all the points of intersections will correspond to the uh, the maxima points. So first maxima here, second maxima, third maxima, and so on and so forth, we can easily calculate. So we'll calculate the values. So if we substitute the values, like intersections will occur at one point, first intersection will occur at 1.43 pi, second will occur at 2.46 pi, and so on and so forth. So can substitute these values, so sine beta by beta square, so it comes out to be the uh, first intensity of the first minima uh, maxima is 4.96 percent of the central maxima. Calculate the second maxima, it comes out to be 1.68 percent and third maxima comes out to be 0.83 percent of the central maximum respectively. So if we plot them, what we see that the intensity is very high to the central order, first order it is very less, second order is very less and third order and so on. After that, you may not be able to uh, detect the intensity very easily. You need sophistication in the experimentation. So this is how we can calculate the positions for the first maxima, second maxima, third maxima, first minima, second minima, and so on and so forth. This is the case with the single slit diffraction. Now, if I can see the two slit diffraction pattern, so you place one slit, another slit close to that. Now here, both the slits we can deal mathematically independently, but we have one additional parameter here that that's the distance between two slits. So this is the additional thing what we have to see that additional distance I am denoted by a small d and all the mathematical treatment remains same. What you do, you have to introduce that small d parameter and what we get here is this one. The i becomes four times i naught sine square beta by beta square into cos square gamma, where this term phi one is com coming out by two pi by d lambda d sine theta. So that's the expression what we have. So here is one i i the sine square beta by beta square corresponds to the single slit diffraction pattern. In, in but now we are introducing two slits. So because of this distance parameter between the the two slits we have one more additional term that is cos square gamma. It means this cos square gamma is coming out because of the interference of the light beam coming out between by these two slits. So if it is a single slit, you get the diffraction pattern. If it is two slits, you get diffraction pattern combined with the interference pattern. So light coming from the diffraction pattern coming out of this, uh, the fields propagating after the two slits will interfere and give rise to interference pattern. So you have a mixture of interference and diffraction both here. 
So if we plot them, this is what we see that this is the case for the single slit and this is the case with this double slit. So what do we observe here? In case of single slit, we had only few orders uh, visible, but in case of double slit, many orders are visible. Another important difference what we observe here is the distance in the full width at half maximum. In, case, in this case is wide and here it is becoming narrow. So this is the trend which will continue if we introduce one more slate, one more slate and so on and so forth. We will see at the end it goes to a, it becomes a delta function and that case corresponds to the diffraction grating. So this is all about the diffraction pattern here. The two, two slit means one, the one term is because of the interference, another term is because of the diffraction and when both the terms are appearing, this for how the diffraction pattern is going to look like. Now, what another important and peculiar thing what we need to observe here that at some point where we see this dash dash, it means there is no intensity. Where the one con the condition of maxima and the minima, they interfere themselves because of the if one of the terms is giving you the intensity as minima, then whether interference terms expression will give you maxima, but the intensity resultant intensity will be zero. And that is why you do not get these uh, diffraction orders. And this is what we call them as the missing orders in, in the case of diffraction. So now coming back to the uh, by research part. So in the research part, I, I deal with the these research areas, information security, pattern recognition, digital holography and structured light. So in inter interfero interf in, uh, information security, I deal with the interruption decryption techniques and in pattern recognition, I deal with the uh, different types of relation schemes and digital holography is another version of uh, holography where we record the interference pattern on a CCD camera. There is another way to achieve phase information as well. That is through transport of intensity and that is used for the as the quantitative phase imaging techniques. This is the another recent work which I have where we have started recently. That's the, the structured light. In this case, we structure the light beam or we fabricate the light beam. We control the light beam. Its intensity, wavefront and polarization state and we utilize those uh, structured light for various applications, mostly uh, encryption. So what is the basic of the, the encryption scheme, optical in information security, is we start with an input image, use a random face mask, calculate the Fourier transform of that. In the Fourier plane, place one more random face mask and take inverse Fourier transform. It gives you the in, in, encrypted image. So this beautiful image has been converted into a noisy pattern. And with the use of these keys, correctly we can decode this information back. This is what the basic structure of the uh, optical encryption schemes. Further, we had many uh, variations and modifications into the schemes. We introduced the digital holography concept for this encryption decryption uh, techniques. Then we tried to obtain uh, the encryption decryption with the partially coherent illumination and this is what we were able to achieve with applying this uh, QR code, quick response code, and we achieved it with the uh, LED lights. So if we use a laser light source, then it gives more uh, speckle pattern, which creates more noise. But if you use an LED light, we get reduced noise. And QR code is further uh, a noise uh, tolerant scheme. So this is how we have achieved them. We have further used the concept of the structured light, that is the arbitrary vector beam encoding for the encryption uh, scheme. One of the geometries what we have uh, demonstrated uh, in this aspect, like this digits one, two, three were encoded, and we use different uh, keys to decode them. So this is the another uh, area which uh, have been working, and uh, my students are contributing this area. So further coming back to my achievements, uh, I currently am serving as the associate editor of the optical engineering. It is a international journal published by SPIE USA 
I am also associate editor of the, uh, on the editorial board of the optical information processing and holography. It is a specialty section of the journal, online journal Frontiers in Photonics. In past, I have served as the academic editor to the scientific world journal Signal Processing. It is published by the Hindavi. I have served as the school director at CRB School in uh, 2015. I organized a conference in 2014. I am advisor to the IIT Patna student chapter of POSA, which is now called as the Optica. I have reviewed to a large number of journals uh, published by Optica, SPIE, Springer, Elsevier, IEEE, IEEE, Hindavi, MDPI, CSIR journals, and so on and so forth. So far, I have guided seven PhD students. As per the Google Scholar, the site number of citations to my credit is 3092. Its index is 32, item index is 62. I have authored a book, Optical Crypto Systems, published uh, international journal publications as 78, then national journal publications, international conferences, national conferences, invited lectures within India as well as abroad. And in addition to that, uh, because of my hobby, I write scientific articles also in Hindi, in the Hindi, different Hindi magazines. So my name appeared in the world's top 2% scientist list, consequently in 2020 and also in 2021. The list is published by the Stanford University. I received this best teacher award, undergraduate uh, teaching in September 2020. Uh, one of my papers have been cited uh, highly, and that is why uh, the IOP publications uh, they gave me this India, India top cited author award. Outstanding reviewer in 2016 from the Journal of Optics, educational award from the Edmund Optics Singapore. They gave us uh, US dollar uh, 500 worth equipment, which we couldn't do, we could not avail. I've been uh, conferred the senior member SPIE and senior member Optica. So thanks very much for your kind attention. Thank you.